Hey everyone, welcome back to Is Your Six Covered, and today's topics are what skills do you have that can make you useful in shit hits the fan scenarios. So today with me we got Matt from Resist the Tyranny. How you doing, Matt? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we'll get some uh, some fun and exciting people to show up and uh, give some more knowledge. And we have quite a few people out there already. We just started, and uh, Jay Watterson, 69, Horace and Gear, yourself, Resist the Tyranny, Knuckle Mac 33 he was on here last time, had a lot of good information. The descriptions below, or not the description, the link is in the description. And we have, uh, we got Knuckle Mac 33 Jack of All Trades, none of you Fucking business is in the house. Space buns and rich forty one fifty. So if you guys are interested, have some good good topics to talk about. Um, like I said earlier, the link is in the description. We'll get started here and uh, have some fun. So we talked uh, previously off air, and uh, Matt and I were talking about some AR. 500 steel and the cost and uh, different sizes and stuff and making your own targets. But uh, with that in mind, we were talking about welding and and Matt's a professional welder and I kind of dabble in it. Did a little bit of work in my younger years before I went into the fire service with the welding. But I tell you what, something that's uh, is a great thing to know how to do if you're you know if you want to get out there and MIG weld or stick weld or whatever or even get to the case of TIG welding you know there's a lot of stuff you can learn and a lot of reasons why to learn it whether you're building the armor for your vehicle you know you're welding parts back on because you know shit has hit the fan there's nowhere to go there's no places to get stuff welded and you may have to figure out a way to arc weld you know with uh, some jumper cables and some stick rods right Matt so what are some of the things that we could, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe that's a good a good thing to talk about is maybe having some stick rods, um, you know, on a vehicle or something where you could. Is there a way do you think that we could switch it over and and use some jumper cables to do some welding? Well, there's always there there's there's always torch welding, uh, oxycetylene welding, uh, which is pretty easy. You can use a torch and a coat hanger, um, which I've done. Uh, you can also use torch and stick rods. You know, you just knock off all the all the coating off a stick rod, and you can use torch and stick rod. Um, welding is one of those things that that is a super useful thing to know how to do. However, it depends on what scenario you're talking about for a shit hits a fan, on whether or not it's going to be even be able to be used. Uh, you know, if you're if if the power's out. Uh, and you don't have a set of torches, or you don't have a converter on your on your vehicle. There's not going to be a way to do something like that. Yeah, well, that's a good thing too. You know, maybe having a backup generator, or if you have an RV that has a generator. Um, that's the thing is, there's just so many so many scenarios and so many different things to think about. It's basically overwhelming trying to figure out. You know, everybody in their mind has an idea of what they think, you know, um, basically shit hits the fan, what they think is going to happen. You know, whether it's the economy collapses, whether it's, uh, you know, someone invades America to an earthquake, tsunami, whatever the case is, you know, everybody's guess is just as good as the rest, you know, and, and planning and trying to figure out what needs and, and equipment that you're going to want and, so it's definitely hard. So like you said, you know, if, if you had a, let's just call it a EMP and power's out, everything's out, you know, maybe welding's not a, an option. So, but like you said, gas welding, you know, if you were to make your way to, and that brings up a good point too, Matt, like you said, I don't see many people running to some type of welding supply to grab supplies like that. I mean, I, I feel that a lot of people, especially the, the layman people that don't understand welding and that kind of stuff, they would skip right over that. Where maybe grabbing some some oxygen and acetylene tanks and some regulators and that kind of stuff with some tips could be, you know, very valuable. 
Oh, most certainly. I mean, it, it's something that I would like to uh, invest in. I haven't done it, but uh, is a large settling and uh, an oxygen bottle set with a set of gauges and a cutting tip. Um, you know, a cutting torch because that. I mean, it is going to be useful. Uh, you can get it brazing. I mean, that's that's another thing. Uh, you can get brazing rods and a brazing torch. You know, brazing tip for your torch. Um, you know, basically another kind of welding. Uh, not as strong, obviously, but it, it is it is skills, especially uh, craftsman skills. Uh, whether it's a mechanic, um, an electrician, a welder, even a carpenter. I mean, these are all skills people ought to know. They they really are. I mean, just the basics. You know, I, I'm not saying be a, a be the kind of carpenter that can build your own house. I'm not saying be the kind of welder. You know, they, I, I mean, I have 20, you know, almost 20 years of welding and fabrication using hydraulic brakes and shears and and a, a number of different equipment uh, certified in, in, in MIG, MIG, TIG, and stick. I'm not saying that, but basic MIG or basic stick welding. Uh, learn how to torch weld. Uh, these these are basic skills that every able-bodied person ought to have a little bit of experience in. Yeah, you know what? And um, Jerry Pruitt brings up a good point up here. Let me see if I can find it. Welding can be done by wiring batteries in series, and you kind of see like now. I you know I've said it in a video. But it's kind of true as um, the A team, right? You know, you have a you have a group of individuals. You can consider it. They have a mission, and they're trying to rescue someone or whatever the hell it was. It's been so long since uh, I've watched it. But um, you know, they're always building something. You know, whether they're they're uh, hooking up their their van or whatever the case is for armor plating or whatever. But yeah, definitely a skill that if you're not familiar with, you know, definitely that might be something that you guys are interested in and trying to learn because it is it is the thing. Don't you know and I put it in the description in the part one and I think also in part two, but it's better to not be a master of one thing but be a jack of all trades or, you know, be halfway proficient at something else because like you said, Matt, you know, you don't need to know how to build a badass house, but you may need to know how to build a shelter. So if you know how to swing a hammer, cut some wood with saws, and you know at least you have an idea of when you're building something. It looks in your hey, look, you have the ability to understand that it's it's structurally sound. It'll hold or whatever you're building, depending on what you're building, it'll it'll work out instead of uh, you know banking on something that's not going to work. So. And with when it comes to that, what you're talking about, you know, even repairing your your current structure. Um, you know, and, and your shit has fan moment may not be, you know, an EMP. It may not be World War Three. It may not be anything like that. It may be a natural disaster. It may be riots, where your where your structure, your building gets 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 uh, get gets damaged. You know, know yeah. how to, know basic geometry and know how to fix. Um, you know your wall. How to replace a window? These are pretty easy, basic things. I mean, there are a lot of construction workers out there that make really good money doing really easy things. <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of it is the laziness on people's parts on wanting to fix their own stuff. And you know, I, I'm I'm up for it. If there's a pro that can do it better than me and it needs to look good, you know, like say you're doing fin finished cabinetry. I know that I don't have the skills. I can build the box and make doors and shelves, but it's probably not going to look pretty. So I know that I need the professional. But if, you know, like SHTF happens, well, maybe it doesn't need to be a finished carpenter. You know what I mean? It's like as long as it works. Hey, Luke, yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't have to put up trim. Yeah, yeah. that's the biggest thing. It's got to work, right? And that's the idea. And that, that's a very valuable point. I see where you guys are going with this conversation, um, and and you're right. Like you know, I can do brakes and shit, but I don't have a hoist, so it's a pain in the ass. I also don't have a huge shop, so minus fucking twenty degree weather, I'm going. 
you know what? I'm going to pay for the luxury of having somebody else do it in a heated shop because <laughs> I don't have that, and I don't have that tool. There's the other thing, having the tools to do some of these things, right? And certainly some of the knowledge to do it to its, uh, you know, its cosmetic stature, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I agree with you there. But, yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like fixing my water heater. I've never fixed a water heater before, but I thought, fucking YouTube is awesome, certainly. So I checked it out six videos later, and four hours later, my water heater was back up running, right? And 65 bucks later, well, 85 bucks later because I had to buy a volt tester. And the number one thing that I learned right away, apparently you need to shut the, the power off, which is which is good advice. That's good, solid advice right there. That is great, solid advice. <laughs> it ask, is. Ask the, who was that? I think it was the fat man. He was working on a jacuzzi or something. And, yeah. Uh, but he had the wrong breaker off. <laughs> I shut the whole fucking thing down. <laughs> That's uh, right. Hit the freaking button. Banter, I'm a little surprised with as much as you do prepping and survivalism and bushcraft and stuff like that. I'm a little surprised your water heater is an electric and not gas hooked to propane. Uh, no, it's definitely electric, but I don't, I don't have a problem with that because I have the knowledge on how to heat my water through, uh, a basically a condenser system that, um, I have the, the piping in behind the furnace basically ready to rock it. So I've got the fittings and everything that if I need to get in, it's also a gravity fed water system. We will never run out of water. It'll, it'll always flow. The problem we have is our sewage. So we would have to stop. We would have to literally plug all the fucking the sinks in the toilet, not use it, because eventually the pumping station would would back up. So that I know, and that, and I also know that we have at least three days where it works. It works for 72 hours. We've put it to the test uh, because you know I asked one of the town guys. I said, "How long will that system run?" He goes, "Oh, that'll run a week before you'll have any issues." And I said, "Okay," but we'd put it to the test for three days without hydro. Uh, we've been without three days here without hydro so far. So, but yeah, I agree with you. But yeah, these are all good skills. Like you know, we we, we mentioned basic torch welding, basic carpentry, basic electrical, uh, basic mechanics, and in, in in reality, in order to be able to achieve uh, achieve those things, to be able to do those things, your your tooling. I mean, you you can get a. And I realize they're not nice. I mean, I got a giant freaking toolbox, and you know, upper and lower. And but I've made my living off of those tools, so I have the abundance of tools, and they're nice tools. But you can go to like AutoZone or even uh, Walmart and get a cheap socket and wrench set for what is it, forty bucks? Yeah, yeah. I did. You know, pick garage sales, everything else, and built my tool set that way. Just because, you know, I'm cheap. <laughs> and that's that's kind of a good point, Matt. You know, it doesn't need to be the nice Mac or the nice Snap-on. When you're doing that as a profession, yeah, they're a little smoother, a little nicer on your hand when you're doing it for eight hours, you know, or ten hours a day. But, you know, they all work basically when you get down to it. Now, some stuff, you know, sucks as far as ratchets, and you can get some pretty crappy stuff, but... Just like you said, basic tool set. Yeah. If you're going to do it over and over every day, you're going to want something that's going to last, certainly. But it's, yeah. oh, it's like some systems that I have in my, in my bug-out system. I don't need a, a very professional set because in my my, my get-home bag, for instance, I'm, I may not use that fucking every day. You know what I mean? It's going to be just in case. Certainly, I want it to be good enough quality that's going to fucking work and last for what I need it for, but could you use something that's going to be you know what I mean? It's like the shovel when you're we talking about the shovel. You yeah. know what I mean? That uh, that Matt did the review for. Well, it's going to do the job in a pinch. You know what I mean? Are you going to be using it every single day? If that's the case, then no, it's fucking garbage. It's not going to work, right? And shame on you for thinking it would. You know, but but well, hey, hand, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I I hear you. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't keep my money in a bank. I I. I uh, I just don't. I don't like it. I don't know why. Um, I've been like that since probably, I think even before the crisis in 2008. Uh, my so, dad, I think, had a lot to do with that. So when you bury it, you have to wait for summer. That way the dirt's soft enough that you can actually get to it, right? Good savings plan, yeah. You go, <laughs> fuck, you get to it. It's frozen in the ground. 
Yeah. What if I call the guy with tobacco? If I charge 80 bucks, you're like, oh, fuck that. You know, at least <laughs> during the winter time, you're not going to spend that much because you can't get to it. Look, <laughs> I keep I keep my fucking cash, right? I, I keep my cash out of the bank. I, I, I always do. And it's, I don't trust the cocksuckers. And if it's going to collapse, I got all my money. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, it stays right there. You know, and, and I have a, a zero budget is what they call a zero budget. Everything gets paid. My savings envelope gets a pay, and you know what I mean, and, and, and that there's money in there, right, for that rainy day or whatever the case is. There's a lot of money in there. Um, That's but the I don't part, though, Luke, is, like you said, if there's, if there's a collapse, you know, and I talked about this, I think, on my Ramblings 1 or whatever, but is that, you know, that I don't feel like that – Paper money, at least in America, that shit's not even worth the paper it's printed on. It may not, but but I like to want to have the option. If it's a collapse or all the electricity goes, I can't get it. So I don't even have the fucking option. Yeah. There's very somebody out there who's going to think that this still means something. And where is he? Because I want to meet him first before someone else gets to him and tells him this is worth nothing. <laughs> At the very least, there's not something to bargain with, even if it is fucking no better than toilet paper. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, right? It well, gives you option. It seconds his fire starter, too. Well, well, there's the other option. I also, <laughs> um, I mean, like everything's in envelopes. I have an envelope system. All cash, right? You know, for all my bills. Everything gets in an envelope. Everything gets paid. I go in uh, into the bank, and I'll I take all my money out. I go home. I sort it all in an envelope. I go back to the bank, pay each bill. Here's the bill. The guy says to me, he goes, you know, you can leave the money in there and just do it through the guy. I said, no, I don't want to do it that way, right? And then I put in, um, if I want to use my debit card, my debit visa card, because I don't have a credit card, but I have a debit visa card, I use that for, for anything online. So if I want something, I have to go to the bank, put the money in the, into the card, Go back home and use it, and it's usually within a 24-hour period. Yeah, you know, call me a yeah. conspiracy nut. I don't know, but no, that's that's the same way I am. In fact, uh, today I broke a decade-long streak. It's been a decade since I had a bank account. Nice. And I got a bank account today. I put five dollars in it to open it. And I'll never oh put any more God. money. I'll never put any more money into it than that. And the only reason I did it was so I can start cashing my paychecks for free instead of paying Walmart three dollars every time. That is fucking so hilarious, dude. You're you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind here. Hang on a second. Let me show you. Uh, where is it? I, I got I gotta prove this to you. Like, where is it? Hang on. Where is it? It's right here somewhere. Uh. Well, Bear's looking for uh, the paper or whatever he's looking for. I'm going to jump out here real quick again. Are we live? <laughs> yeah, we're live. Oh, hello, everybody out there. This is Luke Banner talking. Um, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have said all that shit if I knew we were live. All that stuff, I mean. Stuff. I meant stuff. Sorry. Are you talking about shit hits the fan stuff? Yeah. All right, we got... Uh, <laughs> Mr. X Man rules. Horace and Gear. America died 1913. Thanks for coming. Um, Jerry Pruitt. Thanks for showing up. Nanny F in business. We got Space Buns. Resist the tyranny. And blah blah Tuesday. Hey, what's up? And I think I got most of everybody. If I haven't yet, I'll get to you. Type something in the comment section. In the description below, if you guys want to get in here, we're kind of just uh, having some fun talking right now. We're going to get into some more information about STHF and uh, what kind of skills do we have that could help out. We've talked a little bit about welding, uh, just a hair on plumbing and some construction stuff. But if you have skills like that or medical, like... uh, Horse and Gear said, you know, it'd be definitely good. I know uh, Luke is a paramedic. Myself, I'm an EMT. And uh, so we're going to definitely probably get into a little bit of medical here lately or in the future. So feel free to jump in and uh, 
Let's have some fun. Did you find that paper, Luke? I did. It's funny, Matt just said that. I had to I had to open the account because for whatever reason the, the current bank but 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 there it is. Right there. Five bucks. Yep, that's what I did. The slave to the banking industry now. In fact, mine was five forty eight because that was the change out of my paycheck. <laughs> was so it was five forty eight. <laughs> well, if you keep that in there for about a hundred million years, you'll get about a hundred bucks. Yeah, no, like I said, I told, I kept asking her. So there's no, no fees, no this, no that. And if I don't do any activity or anything like that, they're like, no, um, everything's fine, blah blah blah, no charges, no fees, no this, no that, no minimum amount, because they, I told them, I will only use this to cash my paycheck. That's the only time I will be here. That's the only time I will use your services. Is to now cash my paycheck for free instead of three dollars every time at Walmart. Yeah, no, that's a smart move. That's definitely a smart move. Then, the, then it's like um, it's kind of hard because it's one one more way they got your info, but but it makes sense. I mean, definitely a savings plan there by not having to pay Walmart three bucks every check, for sure. Uh, honestly, it really didn't bother me. I've been doing it for four or five years now, I guess. At least four years, I've been cashing my check at the Walmart customer service counter, three dollars every time, and uh, to me, that three dollars really was worth the peace of mind that I just had my money. I'm like Luke, I keep it in a box, you know, I keep it that right, I keep it right next to a gun. It is safer sitting next to that pistol than it is in the bank. Yeah, you can get it anytime you want. You can. Uh... You know, you know where it is. It's not floating around in some electronic space world that it's no longer even really there. So that's definitely for sure. Looks like old Luke took a break. Oh, he's jumping back on. The um, thanks for joining us, General Bander. Are you General Bander now? <laughs> Hi. Th thanks for having me on. I appreciate. It. Thanks. Thanks for <laughs> your cousin was here. Your uh, other brother Daryl was here um, just a few minutes ago. You just missed him. <laughs> yeah, he's a good fella. Not too yeah. hard with time. He's Canadian. <clears throat> uh, no, I, I, I was saying there. I apologize for coming, uh, leaving, and coming back again. I'll, I'll be quick about it, but it's ironic anyway, Matt. Um, there it is. Exact same thing. I had to open the account today. They said, "Yeah, we're sorry. We can't cash any more checks without you opening an account." And I went. I'd rather not. And they went, well, you, you'll have to. I said, well, then I'll cash it down at the other place. And, they, and I go, shit, that's going to cost me like 12 bucks. And I'm like, so they said, well, you can open an account and put $5 in it, and, and we'll just keep it open, and, and there'll be no interest or, any, or any, any fees or anything like that. You just have to have something, any kind of transaction within six months. And I went, perfect, thank you. And they go, okay. So that was it. And they said, well, we'd be interested in this. And I said, no. And they kind of looked at me so strange. It was I just, know, dude. I had the exact same experience today. Exactly <laughs> the same. I'm sitting there. She's like, "Do you want to sign up for this protection, that protection, and this protection?" I said, "No." She's like, "Really? This is like these are protections." I was like, "I'm not going to use your services. <laughs> you guys will not see a penny from me. I'm only going to use it to cash my check." She goes, "Well, we can give you. Um, we can also. Did you want to want an interact card?" And I went, "No." And they went. It doesn't cost me that. I said, I don't want it. And they went, oh, okay. And it was like she didn't know where to go from there. Like it was like, oh, well, I've never had that app before, so I'm not sure where to go now. And she was, you know, and she's like, I'm going to have to get you to speak with another person because I'm just, you know, and I said, yeah, no problem. So it was, it was interesting. Yeah. A lot of interest. That's probably the first time they've heard that. I'm sure of it. Because the lady says, okay, so did you, did you you didn't want an interact card? And I said, no. Nope. She goes, well, it doesn't really, you know, there's there's it's only a dollar twenty five per transaction. I said, no, I don't want it. And she's like, oh, okay. So you'll be just using the tellers then? I go, 
yeah, those still available nowadays, right? And she goes, right, but they're only open from 10 to 3. And I go, yeah, that's okay. I'll try to make it in before 3 o'clock. <laughs> so it was hilarious. I had to share that anyway because it was just so ironic. You said you opened up an account for the first time today. And it certainly hasn't been my first time. And I do have a bank account with another branch for my debit visa. Um, but that's because I, I have one investment that's from my former job that really has nothing to do with me, so to speak. Well, it does, certainly. It's my investment, but it's paid in by the other company, so I keep that open, but I don't utilize this it. Is anyway, not go my ahead. First, this is not my first bank account. This is my first one in a decade. Um, yeah. I have, I've had bank accounts in the past. It's just been 10 years since I've had one. I decided I didn't need them. I don't trust them. I don't like banks. I, and, and I told the lady this. That I don't basically I told her I don't trust you I don't trust you or the company you work for but you're offering me the service of cashing my check for free for a basically one-time deposit of five bucks so I said the same thing I, I told the lady in the office I don't really trust your bank <laughs> she's like oh it's a good bank and I said and no offense I just don't trust really any bank but that's me. And she still gave me this bewildered look, like I was an idiot. <laughs> I'm like, well, anyway. <clears throat> I, start, I started investing in, in foreign currency today, too, which is also another new savings plan I got. This is euros, by the way. Um, so whether it's an investment or not, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Anyways. Cool, Logan. You have some different money from different places. Yeah, well, I don't intend on traveling to Europe anytime soon, but like I said, uh, it might I be favorable. Of, I got a bunch of Canadian money that no, the vending machine that the vending machines won't take. Yeah, that's worthless. <laughs> you want to get rid of that? It's like Canadian, Canadian, Canadian quarters, Canadian quarters, Canadian. Yeah, all that pennies. shit screws up the when you go to grab it out of your pocket, and it just doesn't work right. You, you know, it, it's the same coins that when you go to the Coinstar machine to turn in your change and, you know, get money back, you know, get the money back for it. It's all the stuff that gets spit out the other end because the Coinstar machine won't take it. Yeah. yeah. And the filter, yeah. that little screen filter thing. I get it. It's kind of true, though. It's kind of true. It is. So what do you guys... However, say? however, what I am vaping today... Does taste like maple syrup, so there's a little bit of a nice. little bit of Canada. <laughs> I, I get that. And my good. my big toolbox I was talking about earlier was made in Canada, so nice. I get it. I get it. I, well, and it, as it should be, that's uh, that's good. Yeah, friends to the north, friends to the north for sure. What is that? Snap on? Is that is Snap on a Canadian company? ATD. ATD, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But to kind of segue back into what we were talking about, that can be used and shit hits a fan if you have the proper knowledge to do so. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. If you have a bunch of tools and you don't know how to use them, they're kind of worthless. And they yeah. Work. Yeah. So. Uh, this is live. Uh, I should probably grab a grab that if one of you fine gentlemen could be so kind. What do you need? Matt, Matt will get to it pretty quickly. What's that? I didn't I didn't catch what you're saying. Oh, in the internal, sir. Oh. I got it right here. Here. There you go. I apologize. Um thanks. I'm just I'm just so I'm so shocked that it was live. I didn't even notice, I'll be honest with you. So I know, I was kind of like, why is he... And then I'm like, yeah, you had me a little confused there for a second. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know. So my apologies to everyone, everyone on the outside. Um, I've been ignoring you all. It's because I didn't know. <laughs> all right, I got the outside chat up now. I'm going to say hello out there to you fine people. And, uh... Please do. <laughs> a lot of good people out there. Right. I'm kind of scared tonight. I don't see them popping up in here, you know, especially... There's a few of you guys I talked to quite a bit, and you uh, you have some good knowledge. So jump in here in description. The link is in the description. If you got something you want to talk about or whatever, put in the comments, and we'll try to get to it. Oh, was, uh, um, 
I'd like to real quick. We we're talking about you know uh, skills you may have for shit fan, and we talked about um, we talked about let, let, one of the many things we talked about was was uh, automotive tools, automotive skills, um, and being able to fix equipment like maybe generators, like maybe construction equipment, like uh, maybe your car. Um, where do you think, where do you think that would come in handiest? The like, what area do you think it would come in handiest? Like mechanic skills. I think small engines, because everything, like small, think of small stuff, right? Like generators, you know, like where you can tear apart, say, a lawnmower and turn it into like a, a water pump or something. You know, where you got. But small motors being able to do, because like newer cars nowadays, there is no way I can fix it. If it's an old like 64 something or something, you know, with a carburetor and like a normal easy to work on motor, I have the skills for that. But like, uh, you know, being able to make like uh, ATVs, quads, all those bikes that are easy to put together and fix or to turn those into some type of water pump, you know, like uh, the like the small lawnmower engines and that kind of stuff, I, I see that being, you know, a good necessity to know how to how to work on. Exactly. I, I was thinking something like that. I was thinking lawnmowers, ATVs, motorcycles. Even your car, if you have a jack, you can fashion, like if you have a, a hand pump, because if electricity goes out, your electric pump for your well isn't going to work anymore. But you can fashion some sort of a pulley system off of any rotary motor yeah. to to make your well pump work on its own instead of instead of a hand pump. True. You could take a car and lift it up, put it on the jacks, and make some type of belt off of the rim, you know, or whatever. Whether you'd want to do that or not, I don't know. But, yeah, that's, I mean, knowing how to keep stuff running is, you know, we do a lot of desert camping where it's dry camping where you're out in the middle of nowhere. And I think the longest we've done is 16 days. But when your bikes start running like shit and you're so far out that, you, you know, you got some parts and you know how to work on spark plugs that may be fouled or whatever and that kind of stuff, changing the fuel filter or whatever, all those little skills can definitely come in handy because, for for example, if we didn't know how to do that, you know, the first day or so, we would have been screwed because we'd have bikes that are broke down or whatever the case is. Making sure that your generator on your RV or fifth wheel is running. So for sure. <coughs> yeah, it's you definitely have knowledge, no doubt about it. I mean, at the very least, to be able to keep your vehicle going. I was just talking to a friend about today. We were talking about brakes, and uh, I was going to get brakes. Uh, um, new brakes and put them on my vehicle, and we are talking about the cold, certainly how we came into the conversation, so we are going, damn, I mean, it's so cold, I don't know if I want to get at that, because you know what happens, you also need to go, shit, I need a torch, and I don't have a torch, you know what I mean, a settling torch will certainly give you really good heat to, to get a nut or something like that off, and certainly I'm going to need it, need it on my vehicle, but um, I mean, that's just it, so you go, okay, well, now where do you go find brakes? If there's no manufacturing anymore or something like that, now you got to go and find brakes, they're going to be adequate enough to actually put on your vehicle. But then brakes are kind of highly overrated when you think about it. But anyway. <laughs> hey, that's a, that brings up a great point, though, Luke, is having equipment, you know, just like when we pick a firearm. We may pick a firearm because we know that, say, 80% or 90% of law enforcement has that. So the ability for those extra parts to be out there is kind of the same thing. So say you had some crazy vehicle that, you know, you just can't find parts for. That may not be the vehicle you want to have, you know, on, on a normal everyday case because if, you know, something does happen, shit hits a fan, I can go walk 20 feet down the, the road and there may be some parts for my Ford F-350, you know what I mean? You know, those those, yeah. those vehicles that are, are everywhere, you know, having something like that. Like Matt Chevy, he got a new truck if you haven't seen his video or whatever, but... um. That's a vehicle that you're going to be able to go find a, a rim for, a tire for, brakes, you know, a windshield, any of that stuff. They're right. We, we had a chat. I don't know if it was my chat or for somebody else's chat. So many chats, they run together. 
but, but Space Buns was actually Andrea the one who brought it up, and, and she said, you know, and she brought up the exact same point, and it, it is an extremely valid point because, again, even vehicles, and it, it was what she brought up. You know, you want a vehicle that you're going to be able to find parts for it readily. You know, you go down, you pass five vehicles, and you've got the vehicle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then having the general idea of, well, if this isn't going to work, how can I rig it so it will work? You know, most people understand back in the olden days, certainly, you know, if you had a serpentine belt go or whatever like that, you'd look at your, you'd look at your missus in the seat and go, take off your pantyhose. And she goes, I don't think this is the time. And go, this is the perfect time for your pantyhose. So get them off. You know, then you get up there and you're going to need them. And she's like, I paid $7.46 for those. Yeah, well, we're going to be still sitting here. We don't use these pantyhose. So, anyway, but you'd be ideal to be able to improvise, right? And be, you know, uh, have ingenuity. Right, and there's something to be said for that. Um, I think that's almost a because of the fact of our dependency on everybody doing things for us. Most people say, "Well, I'll just pay somebody to do that." We lose that ability to be able to think and think outside the box and be able to, you know, come up with solutions on the on the move. Um, and I, I really I, I see that certainly. People kind of you know, this glazed overlook when a problem arises. So. It, those are the people you run into that, like in my line of work or that I've had in the past. Um, uh, many people know that I'm pretty much a career mechanic, be it diesel or car, uh, mechanic and welder, fabricator. Um, but I've worked in plenty of shops where you run into the person and you say, what's wrong with your truck or car? And they go, it's going tick, 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 tick. <laughs> they got no clue, but they know the sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I guess that's something I've maybe it's that's because I've always that's... less than professional. Well, not professional, less than professional because certainly they're professional mechanics. But I've always had there have always been a buddy. You know what I mean? Who's been a mechanic? He's got a shop. He's got a hoist, and he's got tools. And we hang around and we do things. And I learn. I'm allowed to go in the shop floor. And when he's repairing something, that's how I learned. Well, certainly I learned a lot on the farm. You know because we did. You know, we did do a lot of our own work, our own welding and so on and so forth, our own cutting and everything else. So, but yeah, I mean, you bring up a very valuable point, Matt. People come in and they go, I don't know, it's making a tick, tick, tick sound. Well, how long did you drive it like this? Well, about a week. And I go, but didn't that get annoying, this banging sound? I turned the radio up. You go, you what? <laughs> okay, well, what, what was a, uh, you know, this particular problem now has turned into a very large problem because you kept driving it. Yeah, kind of how I see. and 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 I'm I'm probably going to say this many times throughout this chat. Basic knowledge of basic of, of 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 skills you should have. You know, if you're 40 years old and you don't know how to do basic maintenance to your vehicle, do basic carpentry, basic plumbing, basic electro electrical, um, there. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not even going to throw in basic welding skills because that's that's more specialized than any of the rest of them. But you know, torch welding, knowing how to use a cutting torch and all that is also a great skill to know. But if you don't have those four or five things, you really ought to think about learning. Well, and, uh, and not to mention what your value is going to be in a in a. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. The other aspect is is that. At some particular point, we are going to have a society rebuild, and you are going to be of value if you have skills. So that gives you value and certainly gives you a position. It gives you a position of bargaining. It gives you a position to, to be fed at the very least, and that's one way of looking at it. If you have something to offer that will keep you around, if you're a complete nobody, or no mind, I should say, um, and, and, the, and and I say this as, as gently as I can, but if you're an idiot and you, and you don't know nothing and you have never applied yourself and, you know, um, but you're not going to be of value. Therefore, you know, geez, but, <laughs> you at the head. most, you're going to be just a laborer, you know, where someone can teach you, okay, this is a shovel. <laughs> right, you're going to be in the garden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. so there's there's always a pur yeah. There's always a purpose. American guy, 1913, brought up a good point on um, you know. Do you know how to cure meat or smoke meat? And preserving your food could be a lifesaver. We did talk about that a little bit on uh, part one, 
we talked about canning, and we talked about some of the things that we really wish we could be better at, you know, for for the most purposes, basically being lazy. Like, I'm being lazy and not learning how to can. Um, would I like to know how to learn how to can? Yeah. But have I spent the time and energy into it? No, I haven't. So that's that's a downfall for me, you know. And like electricity, I hate electricity because I don't mind playing with fire because I can see fire, but electricity, man, that all of a sudden, zap. You know, you don't know, and it just shows up, and guess what? You're asking. It's, it's a tickle and a poke. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> nice. you're, you're, you know, as long as you're not standing in a bucket of water when you're when you're. I mean, really, at your house, the most you're going to deal with is 220. I've been zapped by 220 several several times. It sucks, but <laughs> it it's obviously I'm still sitting here. Uh, one ten, one ten is kind of a fun practical joke. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it, if somebody says to you, going, you know, you you all right? Yeah, a little shook up. Well, what happened? Get electrocuted, and they go, Jesus, that that's terrible. Well, yeah, it's not all bad though. I, I did learn something. What's that? Double check, make sure the power's out. I mean, these things can be learned as a or and looked at as a learning experience. Certainly, if you didn't gain knowledge from it, then you're an idiot. You know. Uh, so, yeah. I won't do that again. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, true. Oh, now in Canada, do they have everything off 220 or do they have 110? <laughs> no, for reals. I have a buddy that lives in, um, where the hell does he live? Down in Peru, and everything everything is ran by 220. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah it's 220. Speaking of shit hits the fan, the <laughs> no, alarm just went off. We're good. Yeah, we're good. That's funny. <clears throat> Medical aid. Um, Medical no, aid? Okay. Jesus. That's what happens when you get two phones going here. Sorry about that, everybody. So, okay. So, preparing food. Now, if you guys... What are what would be some of the ways that you would prepare food? You know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You don't have a house. You know, like uh, American died 1913 said. Um, Meats. Uh, where they build the racks on the sticks that are covered, and then they basically smoke it all. You know, like you have to cut it nice and thin, almost jerky style. But uh, that's definitely a way to um, prepare your meat so it'll stay. Well, that. That, that, yeah, I mean, that's one way of drying it, quick drying it, certainly. You don't have to do that if you're going to smoke it. You can leave it in quarters, you know what I mean, and smoke the whole quarter. Yeah. Uh, it just takes a little bit, a little bit. Well, it doesn't even really take that much, to be honest with you. It's just a slower process. And the slower you do it, the better you can do it, right? So, uh, now, how long do you think that'll last, though? I want to plug in here. My family's showing up, so. It's smoked meat. Oh, geez, it's gonna it's gonna last you for the time that it should last you. Um, you know, I mean, it's gonna last you through the season. Um, that that's not that shouldn't be an issue. Certainly, it's gonna depend on where you are too, I suppose. Now, I mean, I mean, not so much that. Like, if you're in if you're in Canada, you don't really have to worry about even smoking it so much if you're in cold temperatures in the winter time. If you take a caribou or a moose or a bear or whatever the case is, and it's freezing temperatures, providing yeah. it stays in a frozen temperature, you're, you're, you don't even need to do that. It's, it's frozen, you know. Um, but if you're talking about summertime, well, then yeah, you're going to want to start that smoking process as soon as possible. And uh, um, and there's definitely, certainly, certainly there's definitely different ways of doing it, right? Here, for instance, salting fish or salting even vegetables and salt cat that's the way to do it. So, which is good. And uh, our host had to step away for a brief second, um, but uh, yeah. Well, that so, gives me a chance to stop typing and just answer answer Jerry Pruitt out there. Um, Jerry said, uh, "Matt, that is wrong. If you are grounded right, uh, if you are grounded right, uh, AC battery has enough to kill you. All electricity. He's right, uh, but all electricity can kill you." given the right circumstances. 
110 volts can kill you, given the right for circumstances. Oh, when yeah. I'm talking, when I'm talking about, when we're talking about, at least in the context that we we're talking about, if you had to open your, your wall plug uh, where your dryer is, uh, where your clothes dryer is, or your oven is, and you get zapped, you just get poked real quick by the 220 that's there. That's, when I say it's a tickle and a poke and it kind of sucks, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, and he's absolutely right. I mean, you know, smaller amount standing in water could very well kill you. I mean, and I've seen it done, certainly. Um, larger amounts can definitely do the same. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. He's not wrong. I know. Um, I say re respect it and, and be careful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take proper precautions, certainly, and uh, and you'll do all right. Um, I, I, I only pissed on an electric fence once, only once, because I, re I remembered it, and I knew that it wasn't a good feeling. So, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, never do what your cousin tells you to do, just because you think it's, you know, especially if he's laughing when he's telling you. It's just common sense. Yeah, it, it, yeah. If nothing, you know, it really what, and it's kind of funny, uh, but we can relate it to what we're talking about, where ultimately knowledge, and, and just like on an, on, an, on an informed state of mind, knowledge is power. Knowledge is probably one of the most important prepping items. Um, it and is, yeah. w one thing to remember, and this is where the comedy comes in, that if your buddy tells you to do something and he's laughing about it as he's telling you, you don't yeah. do it. Right, yeah, this is where you want to second guess it. Uh, and, and, man, that's just, and again, I mean, that's a really good important point. Knowledge is it. You know, I'm always <clears throat> I'm always stuck in the debate on whether what comes first. You know what I mean? It's not chicken or the egg, certainly, in this case. But you talk about preparedness, um, you know, for anything, really. Um, is, is it knowledge or mindset? Which comes first? And I've had the argument. Well, you have to have the knowledge to, in order to get the mindset, uh, to at least to have the mindset change. Um but then someone would say, "Well, you have to have the mindset before you will even lead yourself to the knowledge." So it's 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 an argument that you would probably have on and on and on, um, you know. But like I said, they're they're in the top tier. Uh, when I talk about my survival structure um, that I put in one of my survival videos, our series, I think it was the bug out series uh, that I did with seven part series, I, I talk about the survival structure. And, and again, knowledge is up there 100%, along with your um, you know your resources and planning and uh, your mindset and sustainability uh, the, those are all things that need to be kind of you know uh, explored before you even really get out there and start practicing um, because uh, and again these things will will come and go so uh, uh, as, as you go as you go through everything um, you know you'll you'll always be reassessing your plans you'll always be reassessing uh, according to your knowledge that you've gained and and, uh, and that, that's important, no doubt about it. Uh, and in some instances, like electricity or anything else, you want to get it right the first time because sometimes you don't get a second chance. So that's the importance of pre-planning. And uh, so true. Yeah, you know. Um, so true. Now, um, as far as you know, I asked the question, you know, about mechanical skills, where that would come in handy. Uh, in a survival, you know, I'm going to say survival or shit, it's a fan situation, which of course there's there's a lot of scenarios out there where me mechanical ability may have absolutely zero use, you know. But um, with that being said, uh, carpentry, basic mm -hmm. carpentry knowledge. We can move on to that. Basic carpentry knowledge. Um, you know, e even if you don't. Even if you're not bugging in, so to speak, uh, where you may run into the possibility of having to repair your own home, your own domicile, uh, put a new window in, or repair a window, uh, repair a wall, a hole in the roof, something like that. Um, or if it's post shit hits the fan, where you're using this skill as a bartering tool, um, even out in the wild, if you're making a bush shelter, um, it, you know, Basic carpentry skills are still very useful uh, when it when it comes to building any shelter, whether it's out of tree limbs or two by fours. Yeah, but, well, no doubt about it. You know, I guess because I've been involved with that, I, 
uh, that mindset and that ideology of how things work since I was, you know, even before I was 10, certainly, but, but you know, definitely my starting point, I, I feel, as well as 10 years old when I could really comprehend things a bit more. Basic, just basic fundamentals. Uh, to me now, it seems like a no-brainer on how to build a shelter, but certainly I, I understand that people don't understand the concept. You know, uh, you want to be able to, you know, build things at a certain pitch, you know, and have certain elements to your shelter so it's going to repel water, um, be able to maintain heat, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Understanding induction, you know, conduction, so on. It, it, so it's a lot of fundamentals to it. Um, you know, building traps, for instance. So there's some basic physics that need to be understood. And again, with some basic carpentry uh, skills, is going to assist in that even. Um, building, uh, well, even if you went to the point of building a long-term shelter, you need to build a, a, a cabin, unless you had all the tools, you know what I mean, which don't require a lot, but certainly... You know, you're gonna want to know how to how to have some kind of carpentry skills, so that at least it stays standing for the 25 years. <laughs> that was the key. Oh, exactly. You know, that's why I have. Uh, you know, I mean, okay, Luke, how much how much paracord do you have in your bug out bag? You I have I have yeah I have 100 feet in there, which I still think is probably. Well, I say it's too much, but I have also 100 feet of Marine cord. Old okay. school. I love this. Uh, we call it Marine. But I, I love it. Yeah, it's good so, stuff. So Rick, I don't know yeah. if you can hear me or answer me. Yeah, I can um, hear you. How much paracord do you have in your? But do you have a bug out bag? And if so, how much paracord's in it? I do. I have two because they're a family of four. But I would say I have a, a hundred, basically just one bag, a hundred on each one. That's why I was talking about that. Um, the bank, bank line. line. Yeah. See, I have four hundred feet of paracord and four hundred feet of bank line in my. In my bug out bag. That's nice. That's. I have that for the specific reason of building a permanent shelter. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Because you're gonna go through it fast <laughs> once you start wrapping everything up. Well, yeah. I'm I mean, gonna switch there's, there's, over. I'm gonna switch computers. Yeah, no problem. So I'll be back. Yeah. You know, and speaking to that aspect is that also understanding what you can use as um, um, as a substitute so that you can save your paracord um, for other tasks that might be more suitable for paracord, certainly. So understanding, you know, being able to, again, depending on where you are, I mean, cedar roots or something of this nature and using it or vines, um, you know, certain bark, or how it strips and so on. Um, you know, you can utilize these things for lashings and so on. Um and, uh, you know, how to notch things so that you may not even need as much paracord uh, right. or, or cord, period, and just in being able to notch things um, in a certain way. So I also have 50 feet, and it's in a small roll, but I have 50 feet of stainless steel 16-gauge uh, wire and a pair of pliers so I can tie stuff together with stainless wire that permanently. Right. I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got a substantial amount of, of, of wire mine's in there for the purpose of, of snares, um, but I, I certainly could use it for, you know, um, uh, some kind of lashing if I, if I needed that for for whatever, I suppose. Um, I, I probably wouldn't use it for shelter building, certainly, but, uh, but I mean, I, I could, or, you know, definitely use it if I wanted to. Um, um, have you ever seen the, it's, it's, uh, well, mine's colored green. It's, uh, it's rolled up similar to the way you, when you buy bank line, you know, kind of tall and skinny. Um, right. And it's very, very, very thin, like hair thin. And what they sell it for, they usually sell it around Christmas time to hang like wreaths and, and that sort of stuff. Have you seen that? Is it wire? Yeah, it's wire. It, yeah, basically um, craft wire or picture frame wire. Yeah. It's not picture frame, but it's crafting wire. I have yeah. a roll of a, a a roll that's probably as big around as a roll of quarters, right. uh, and, and that that's what I have for snares. Yeah, and, and you know what? Really, anything will work in that regards. Um, in that in that fashion, for sure. Let me see if I can find something here. Ugh. Here it is. Here. This is uh. Here. 
camera on here. I'm having a poor connection, and I don't want to keep losing it, so I keep my cord off. This here is what they, they uh, use to repair uh, shrimp nets. And um, so I have uh, a little bit of this here, and this is basically, uh, if you put it in perspective to my fingers, um, but it's, it's, it's made of uh, you know, nylon, if you would. Um, but, it's, but it's also, um, when you get her going here, it's also flammable. So there's a, there's a you know, uh, because it is plastic. So, uh, what was it? The cool thing is, sorry? What is it, that stuff? It's, a, it's, it's nylon. Um, it's not really crap. Toy. It, it's, it's, well, it's, 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 it's um, oh, shit, I don't know what, want, what to call it. It's kind of like cordage anyway, but they use it for um, repairing... Um, shrimp nets. So this is what they, they use here for that purpose. Um, it, it's incredibly strong. I, I don't know, you know, what how much weight it would actually be able to hold, um, but it's definitely you know nylon poly. You know what I mean? Uh, it's almost like bank line without the tar covering. Right. Yeah. I suppose. Eh. It's very it's very slick, very slippery. Um, to give you an idea, um, so you can take a bunch of this here. You can put that in, in, in uh, whichever. They also have this stuff here which is for crab pots and it certainly is a little thicker. Um, it braids up well, holds holds well after it's braided um, and even the smaller stuff, I think I have a, yeah, I was showing somebody else the same stuff and of course that braids up fairly well as well. So, you know, so there's there's different things that I've experimented with to try to, you know, preserve my paracord because I'm cheap. Like I said, I, I believe on, on on conserving as much as I can and putting my, my money towards preps that I know is going to be, <clears throat> you know, um, pretty important. Uh, I just went and bought a case of flour again today. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something I do, a case of sugar. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've always got, you know, these things in bulk at, at the house here. Um, so I got more salt than I, I probably need, <laughs> certainly, but that's only because of salting fish and so on and, and, and that process. But, uh, yeah. That's where I'm a little short on the salt. I think I only have 